All right, so we've got this uh, photo here that you can find inside of the lab materials folder. Oh no, I've got a plastic bag right by the mic. Mike. Okay, so horrible noise coming. All right, so I got over with. And no, if you're watching the video and I ask questions, you cannot give me candy. It doesn't work. I can't throw you candy to YouTube. Maybe a future feature. All right. So the first step in creating our new photo is we're going to work primarily in adjustment layers. Now I would like to note right quick that all adjustment layers can be applied directly to pixels. Um, in the case of this background, and if you guys would just watch me for just a quick second, if I double click the, the lock icon, I can get rid of it, which unlocks that layer. And then if I go up here to image, let me see if I can remember where it is, image adjustments, I can literally apply all of these and each of these uh, is pretty much an adjustment layer with the exception of some of these on the end. All of these are pretty much adjustment layers. Now, I don't think that that's a very good way to work. It's destructive. Good question. We're two pieces of candy. What is working destructively? I'm oh, sorry, Corey said first. What now? Writing on pixels? Okay, that's good. Could I get another answer for more candy? Destroying pixels? Yes. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and undo what I just did to return. There's a very good reason why it always locks that background layer. Let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer. The best way to do that, there's a couple of different ways. I think you can go to layer, uh, somewhere in here there's an adjustment layer. Oh, there it is. You can add these, but honestly, the layers panel is where I like to go. So it kind of looks like this, uh, I call it the yin-yang. It doesn't really look like a yin-yang, but it sort of does. So you click that, and there is your list of adjustment layers. Oh, my, man, my mouse wheel is not working yet. All right, these first three I'm going to cover last. I want to cover the first two to start off with. Um, brightness and contrast is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, let's see, did you guys, you guys won't see this add to layer, oops, it's because I was holding down the alt key. Incidentally, you can, oh no, where did my layers find it? Oh, incidentally, you can hold down the alt key and, there we go. Every adjustment layer, let me grab out my layers palette and so you can see what I'm, what's going on here. Every layers palette automatically pops out its properties, and its properties should pop out as soon as you grab this. Uh, by default, every adjustment layer does come with its own layer mask, which still, if I had made a selection on here, remember that whenever you have a selection and you create a layer mask, so I'm just going to make a quick oval selection maybe, and then I create a, let's say, a brightness contrast layer, there is that selection. Remember. Layer masks and selections, the exact same thing. For a piece of candy, I think I have a feeling who's going to get this. A Milky Way. Uh, what is my super secret Photoshop secret that I told you guys about last week that has to deal with what I just said? Secret. I don't know if I called it that last time. I'm calling it that now. Command click the image. Yes. Command click any thumbnail inside of Photoshop and it will automatically turn it into a selection. So I, if I made this mistake and I want that selection back, I can command click this mask and voila, there's my selection again. There's those marching ants. Brightness and contrast. The adjustment layer is fairly obvious. I can brighten and contrast here. Of course, I've got a layer mask. So what is that doing? The black is concealing, and if I alt-click this layer mask, I can actually see it, so just so you guys get an idea. 
I can brighten and darken that area. I can also add contrast. There is a use legacy checkbox, just ignore it. You will also notice a few options down here. Remember every layer kind of has some options. I can show and hide the layer uh, for a piece of candy. What is clipping a layer for a Snickers? Attaching it, what does it do when you attach it? Wait, say again? It is a way of working non-destructively. It's not quite what I'm looking for. Whenever I clip a layer to a layer beneath it, it only affects the pixels of the layer that it's clipped to. Does that make sense? What? So if I clipped a, another layer to this brightness and contrast layer, what will it do? So I'm just going to make a quick vibrance layer and then um, you could click down here and you can see here that it has this little down arrow what is this doing for the piece of candy why would i want to do this yes jesse no what no right which means it's only going to affect what exactly uh, well, no, it's going to affect more than the brightness and contrast. It's going to affect the selection. Oh, he beat you. Oh, I'll give you a piece of candy. I've got too much. But you're getting, you're getting a Butterfinger instead. <laughs> this vibrance layer will only affect that oval. Whereas if I didn't have it clipped, it would affect the entire image, right? It would affect everything globally, right? No selection. How many? You can do it infinitely. Uh, as many layers. I mean, I could do another one. Clip that. You know, it just keeps creating down errors. You can't like clip to a clip. You can't do that. You kind of have to use folders to sort of, there's probably a way to do it, but you'd have to use folders. But anyway, so the brightness and contrast layer. Okay, so let's get into the meat of it. I did want to mention brightness and contrast right quick. I'm going to go ahead and drag that layer to the trash can because I don't really need it. But let's start kind of recreating what Instagram is. The way that you want to do that, the where place where you want to start is levels. I'm going to go ahead and drag my properties palette off. There's another palette that I would like you guys to look at, a concept I would like you guys to see. So window, and my brain isn't thinking about this. Where is it? Not navigator, uh, histogram. Ah, there we go, window histogram. Which brings up this weird looking chart. Uh, let's see. Is there a way I can make it bigger? No, I can't. I'm just going to zoom in on it like this. So this is your histogram. This is a chart. It is a bar chart. Each one of those little spikes represents, there are 256 of them. That is from 0 to 255. That's how Photoshop likes to work, by the way. It always works from 0 to 255. And we'll see that in a second in levels. This is essentially showing us where most of our pixels are. To the left, we see darker pixels. And we can even see kind of which channels they exist in. Although, honestly, that information isn't particularly useful. What can you guys tell me by looking at this histogram? What, if you couldn't see this image and you just saw this histogram, what do you know? What can you tell me? There's a spike, but where is that spike? It's in her face. No, this doesn't tell you where those pixels are. It just says how many there are. And if most of the pixels are to the left, which is the darker side of the spectrum, you could say that the photo is dark. Yeah, and let's actually look at the photo. 
we can see here that the background of the image, let me, I'm gonna hit tab to kind of get rid of things. Just deselect. A lot of these pixels, I would say, are darker than, um, darker as opposed to brighter. Although there is much brighter pixels that are her face. That's where that other spike comes from. There's just not as many. I'll hit tab again to bring back that window. That's where um, some of these other pixels lie. Although I'm kind of surprised that I don't see a much larger thing. We see the histogram in a simplified format whenever we open levels. And we can start to move these points around. Let's see here. If I take my black points and I drag it to the left, notice how it's making, and we can see this in the histogram, as I drag that black point to the left, do you see how it's making the blacks darker and making more colors black? If I adjust the middle slider, I'm kind of adjusting those middle pixels and I'm pushing the histogram in different directions. I'm kind of increasing, it's called the gamma slider. It kind of has to deal with contrast a little bit, but for the most part, you're sort of brightening just those uh, brightest pixels. I mean, excuse me, you're brightening the, the mid-tone pixels. Here is the levels adjustments. I mean, here is the white point adjustment. I can make my brights even brighter. And we can see here in her face, I'm blowing out those pixels. I'm making her face pure white by doing that. There are the output sliders just beneath those where I can grab this little triangle. And by dragging these up and down, I can make the whites darker. That is to say, like say I thought maybe her face was a little bit too dark and I drug this down of course, that kind of makes my photo look very dull. So you have to be kind of careful about when you apply. And then likewise with the darks, I could make my darks brighter. I could kind of lighten the image in a sense, but only with that singular black point. Now, levels only lets you manipulate the black, mid, and white points. It doesn't really have anything in between. If we want something more in between, then we need to go to curves. So again, I'll create a new adjustment layer, just like we did before. And I will select curves. Curves and levels do the exact same thing. They're precisely the same thing, except that um, curves lets you uh, pick points on here. So if I click a point here and I can drag it up and down, and we can see where this line is going. I can make my darks darker and vice versa through the entire side of the photo. If I don't like this point, I can simply select it and drag it off to the side to delete it. I think you can also push the delete key. With every adjustment layer comes a list of presets. These presets I strongly recommend that you use them if you're new to these adjustment layers. They will kind of give you a hint at what different things can happen. Color negative. What happens if I invert my whites and blacks? Is what happens when you invert your whites and blacks. Uh, cross process is kind of like a weird thing. And one of, the, oh, one of the things I didn't quite cover is the fact that you can adjust curves individually in channels. So this is the red channel. And we can see here it has three points. And it creates this kind of interesting effect. I'll go ahead and select back to RGB. But you can select red, green, and blue. And that incidentally is how we're going to create that Instagram look in just a moment. You can make the photo slightly darker you can increase contrast. Uh, let me say, let's see, linear contrast. Let me select linear contrast. And I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit so you guys can see a little better. What is contrast? What is contrast? It 
It is the difference between light and darks. Correct. That's perfect. That is like the precision definition of what I was asking. All right. Look at what the histogram is doing. This middle point represents the neutral midpoint tones. It's exactly where that gray slider was in levels. If I take the bright parts of my image and I brighten them, and I take the dark parts of my image and I darken them, that is going to increase the amount of contrast in the image. So curves and levels are exactly the same thing. Curves gives you a lot more control because you can put individual points. One thing that makes it nice and easy, and this theme will come back again and again and again in different adjustment layers, is this little hand tool that comes along with adjustment layers. If I grab my hand tool and I click anywhere in this image, and we can see it sort of gives me it has a little circle there as I mouse over items. So if I click that part of the image and then I move up or down, I've created a point on the curves layer and it's drug it down where that point that I selected. So it found that, it found the value of those pixels and then it allowed me to drag it down and then I can kind of darken her face down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this levels layer. We're gonna need, we're gonna need a levels layer later. Whenever you create adjustment layers, I highly recommend that you rename them. So let's just say darken slightly, darken slightly. Yeah, that's about right. That's okay. So I've darkened the image slightly because her face is the important part and it was a little bit overexposed. It was a little bit too much. Now we're going to, let's see. Um, so that's brightness, levels, and curves. I would recommend to just never use exposure. So don't bother with exposure. We talked a little bit about hue saturation and black and white. We'll get into some of these in a second. Selective color gradient map. All right, the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and let's apply what we've learned just now. So go ahead and follow along with me. I'll try to go slowly so that we can, we can kind of look up from time to time. Go, I'm going to add a new levels adjustment layer. And I'm just going to remind myself of what values I need right quick. Ah. So with levels open, I'm going to change where it says RGB. I'm going to select the green channel. And then I'm going to, I'll just show you this thing. I'm going to take up the output levels for white. You can use my exact values or you can kind of do this to taste and then taking up the output levels for the black point, but only make sure you have the green channel selected. So green and then pump up the blacks just a little bit. Don't, don't go take it too far. And likewise with the other one. So I'll select my green channel, tick that up and you'll notice that your image has started to look both green and yellow. That has essentially added yellow to the highlights, I think. No, let's see, green. No, green magenta. It's added magenta to the highlights and added green to the shadows. That has to deal with uh, how colors work, by the way. So the opposite of green is magenta. If I take away green, it's going to look like I've added magenta. Does that make sense? With blue, it's yellow. So if I take away blue, it's going to make my image look more yellow. And red, it's cyan, I think. Yeah, uh, if you take away red, I'm going to add more cyan. Interesting, right? Cyan, magenta, and yellow. What does that guy just remind you of? Mm. Yeah, they're related. They're connected. I know this is like M Night Shyamalan stuff, right? Next, we're going to go to the blue channel. You guys take me way too seriously. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do the same thing with the blue channel, but we're going to take the highlight slider and adjust it even more. So I'll go to my blue channel and adjust the black layer slightly. So I'm adding blue to the shadows, or really I've added blue and green. 
and then now I'm going to drag this up. And you're going to, I'm going to drag this slider up a bit more than I did the other one. And one thing when you're working in layers is to go ahead and show and hide so that you can really see what's going on. It looks terrible on this projector, by the way. So we're kind of washing out the photo and, and playing around with the colors based on this is not a natural white balance. We're starting, we're starting to kind of create that Instagram effect. Next, we're going to apply a hue saturation adjustment layer. And uh, I'm sorry if this stuff is confusing. This is kind of my notes. You don't need to worry about that. You should only see two adjustment layers, just one that darkens slightly and then this levels layer. We're going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And we're going to adjust a specific color. And I need to reference these. Uh, we're going to adjust the yellows. So from here where it says master, I'm going to select the yellows. Again, look at look here. There's a hand icon that works exactly the same like the hand in curves, except that it selects colors instead of brightness values. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand how that hand tool kind of works? Very, oh, God, that's the second pun today. Handy. Sorry. Oh, that was bad. All right. And you're going to decrease the saturation and lightness slightly. So I'll go back to my hue saturation. Again, I'm kind of working from a file here that I created earlier. I'm going to take down the saturation of yellows just a little bit, not more than 20. And then likewise with the lightness. So just kind of a tiny check. So I'm going to hide and unhide that layer. Always do that. Always kind of take a look at what's going on. And honestly, I think it's kind of looking pretty good if I shift the hue just a little bit to the left because I like how it's kind of turning the sky. I don't know, like play with these settings, like playing around. These are adjustment layers. Like they're not stuck anywhere. You're not going to break your photo. If you're working non-destructively, you're going to be able to kind of do whatever you want. I don't know, play with greens or something. <laughs> you can create some weird stuff, but... All right, for my next trick we're going to do something a little bit different. A lot of different ways to make selections. Let's go ahead and uh, do it this way. We need to create a little bit of punch around a certain area of the photo. I don't think there's an area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new curves, a new levels adjustment layer. Yes, you can have multiple levels adjustment layers. You can do this all day. However you want to organize things, it's pretty flexible. Uh, I'm just going to name it just for my own sake. What is this? Uh, I'm just going to say bump up the blacks. Blacks a little bit because I'm going to take, I said blump. Okay, that's not even a word. I'm going to take my output levels and adjust it a little bit like so. Now that's going to kind of wash out the photo. And you do need to be careful about this kind of thing when working with black levels and white levels and you're going to print it out. This can really make your photo look like crud if you make the blacks look. Don't try to use these black levels, the output levels, as brightening options. It doesn't work out well when you try to print it. It can make photos look really, really bad. Anyway, I don't want to apply this to the entire photo. So what I'm going to do is something I was going to show you last week, but I decided to kind of move it to this week. And that is one last way to create a selection, or in this case, a layer mask. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the gradient tool. Go ahead and uh, right click up here at the very top left where it sort of looks like a gradient and select reset tool. Kind of a good habit to get in, it just sort of sets you back to normal. Now I want you to go ahead and press the letter D which will set your default colors to white as your foreground and black as your background. So D default. The next thing you need to change up here in the, I like to call it the contextual menu bar. I'm not sure what it's called. I'm going to select radial gradient. Up at the top. Is everybody caught up with me? So you're grabbing the gradient tool. That's this option right here. I recommend that you reset the tool. And then you're selecting radial gradient, which is this option right here. It's the second option in that little list of types of gradients. There are all kinds of gradients. 
Maybe you could experiment with some of these other gradients. I don't know. Oh, uh, right click here where at the icon, you can select reset to. That's just in case if you did any gradient work uh, earlier. So with that layer mask selected uh, for, I guess it's kind of too obvious. This layer mask is selected because it has this little bounding box. With adjustment layers, it doesn't really matter, but sometimes it's good to know. Uh, let's see. Oh, right. With the layer mask selected, I'm going to grab my gradient tool, click somewhere in the middle of her face. I'll pick her nose. And then I'm going to drag a line outwards. Can you guys see that? I'm dragging a line kind of at a diagonal. It doesn't really matter which way because it's going to create a radius. I'm just picking the, the radius of my circle, essentially. And we can see, and if I alt click the layer mask, I can take an actual look at what it looks like. I've created a gradient that looks like that. Uh, don't apply it twice. And if I show and hide that layer, we can see that I've, it's a very subtle adjustment. I've just bumped up the brightness of her face, just a tiny little bit, not a lot. It's a good idea to do things in steps when you're working in with photos. Just kind of step it up each time of the way. Like maybe have one curves adjustment layer, just bump up the brightness a little bit. Maybe if it was too, if it wasn't enough, you have another curves adjustment layer where you take it up again a notch. And if for any reason you over apply an effect, let me way overdo this. This is way too much, right? I took my output levels in that layers. I simply, by the way, if you just click kind of the thumbnail or where the thumbnail would be, it will bring up this properties palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank that up way too much. If you ever do that, if it's ever too much, you can always lower the opacity of that layer to kind of bring it back down. Very common way to work is to kind of over apply things and then reduce the opacity to kind of take it down a notch. Now for our next step, we need to find sparkles.jpg and we're going to add a texture to our photo. I recommend finding it on the desktop. We're going to need a smart object anyway, so the best way for this one is to simply grab that sparkle.jpg. Does everybody see it? It should be in the lab assignment 9 folder. I'm going to drag it and drop it into the photo, which is going to put it on top of everything. By default, whenever you drop a photo like this, it starts, I'll hit tab to kind of get rid of everything so you guys can see. By default, it starts in transform mode. Remember transform mode, you hit command T, it goes into this mode, I can rotate, I can change the size. Be careful about, uh, we're at 77%, so we're good in terms of size. Don't go above 115, 120. So make sure it, uh, the photo is the size of your photo. And then push enter to kind of commit that change. Whenever we're in transform mode, we need to hit enter, and that'll take us out of transform mode. The nice thing, though, about, this is kind of one of the rare instances when you could make it larger. You could squeeze the photo in different ways because textures, you're just after the texture and not the specifics of the photo. Does that make sense? That having a less uh, blurry texture is not that big of a deal as opposed to if this image underneath was actually pixelated and blurry. Does that make sense? So it is okay to kind of use textures. The next thing I need to do is I'm going to apply a blend mode. Uh, we're going to apply the screen blend mode to this. So selecting the layer and then changing the blend mode from normal to screen. So you guys see where that is? From normal to screen. And voila, we've taken the brightest pixels. What screen does is it, it's one of the brighten blend modes. You're looking confused. Does anybody, does anybody need help? Maybe I should take a pause and walk around for a second. Okay, starting back up again. Uh, we're going to do something next. It's kind of something that we haven't really covered yet. We're going to use a filter. Um, so up here in the filter menu, you must have the smart object selected incidentally when you do this. So filter, 
we're going to find blur. Filter blur, Gaussian blur. Filter blur, Gaussian blur. So with that smart object selected, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Is everybody able to find that one okay? I'm not gonna blur this too much. I want some of the texture, but I don't I don't want it to be quite so sparkly. I want to kind of to blur it a little bit. Gaussian blur is just a blur. And I can kind of set a radius value. And I'm gonna kind of take it up to taste. And the more I take this up, the more it's gonna change. And don't worry if you feel like you've applied the wrong value. Because we're applying it to a smart object, it will be a smart filter. Um, I hate that name. <laughs> but we can always go back and change it later. So I went ahead and set a value of 2. Actually, you know what? I took it, I take it back. I want to set a much higher value. I remember now what I was supposed to do. I'm sorry, I forgot something. I'm going to set a really, really high value where I can't even tell what the sparkles are anymore. Because what I'm going to do is every smart filter comes with its own layer mask right here. And notice how it's kind of positioned underneath the layer. That simply means that I'm only going to be able to mask, instead of masking the layer itself, I'm going to mask the filter, the blur that we just applied. So likewise with before, I will select the layer mask. So make sure you see the little bounding box around the layer mask itself for the smart filter. And then just like before, with my gradient tool selected, and it should remember all of those settings, I'm going to apply another radial gradient in the same way. And I might hit undo a few times to kind of get this just right, because I don't really want too many sparkles on top of her. And maybe I might uh, grab my brush and with white as my foreground and a nice soft brush, make sure your hardness is turned all the way down. In fact, this might be another good opportunity to go ahead and reset your brush tool. So I'll reset it. I'm going to use my bracket keys, just like we talked about last week, to make that larger and bigger. Oops, grab the pencil. And then maybe I might start kind of brushing away some of these sparkles where I don't kind of want them. I don't really want them on her so much. And because of the way that we sort of blurred everything, it should be fine. And then I'm going to kind of show and hide that layer so we can sort of see that. There's also eyeballs for the, the filter itself. If you're a little bit confused about the smart filters, don't worry about it too much. We're going to cover that in detail, I think, in two weeks. So It just kind of happened to fall into this lecture. I feel like it's kind of hitting it a bit hard with the sparkles. Like It's just a little bit too sparkly for me. So I'm just going to take that opacity down. And incidentally, just a reminder, there's always these scrubby sliders. It's an, idea interf it's an interface idea inside of Photoshop where you can click the word opacity and then drag to the left and reduce that opacity, like so. Um, let's see, the next thing that we could talk about balance uh, black and white photo filter channel mixture color lookup what's color lookup let's forget what this one is this one's kind of an odd one but anyway so that's kind of a few basic important adjustment layers now let's take um, let's take a 10 minute break and go ahead and um, well if you need to step away and I'll go ahead and stop the video.